On this episode of TFL Truck, we're gonna figure out which all new truck has the best technology, right? That's right, Andre. And to do that, we've got four of the newest trucks, the Ford Maverick, the Hyundai Santa Cruz, the Nissan Frontier, and the Toyota Tundra. Let's jump in the Ford and get started. And of course, to do this, we have our latest high-tech scoring system. That's right, it's a pen and a piece of paper. <laughs> but what we have here is we're gonna rate each truck out of 100 points based on infotainment, voice control, Apple CarPlay, and some other metrics. And we'll let you know how the truck is doing as we go along. So this is the Maverick, this is the Lariat trim. So Andre, let's go ahead and start with the list by talking about the center infotainment screen in the Ford Maverick. What are we looking at? Well, first of all, uh, the size minimum, I think, should be eight inches. Eight inches yes. is your size well, minimum? Well, well, yeah, because that's every truck these days is going there. And I think Nathan has been playing with a serious XM system here. <laughs> all right. So eight inches is what Andre says is the size well, diagonal, minimum. Diagonal, though. Diagonal. Yeah, that's pretty depressing for most guys watching this. Oh. But anyways, let's measure the screen diagonally. Yes. So it is, in fact, an eight-inch display. And then I also want to go side to side because I think in some ways that's yeah. a more useful metric. And the Maverick is a seven-inch size the side screen and Andre what do you think of the positioning of the display um, it's a little bit too upright because I'm fairly tall my head is almost near the ceiling and the angle uh, of the screen I wish it was tilted back just a little bit but the other measure of course is how easy it is to find the home screen and it's super simple it's right here on the left um, so that's a good uh, thing. Now this is the SYNC 3 system, so it's not like the latest generation of SYNC 4, and it certainly isn't the crazy new system in like the Ford Mustang Mach-E. Now in terms of its functionality, it's okay. So this is the second Maverick we've tested. The first Maverick we had a couple weeks ago had a lot of freezing issues, a lot of response issues. Mm -hmm. This one's a little bit better than that truck. However, it still does occasionally act slow to respond. Um, and then it being a relatively older system, I think we should rate this a five out of 10. I agree. Okay, so five out of 10 on the infotainment system in the middle, but what about voice control? This video was made possible by our friends at manscaped.com. We are strong believers in keeping your truck well-maintained, and now you can keep yourself maintained with a Performance Package 4.0. The Lawnmower 4.0 is a waterproof maintenance machine with replaceable ceramic blades. It also has an LED headlight and wireless charging. And the Performance Package 4.0 bundle gets you extras like ball deodorant and ball toner. And this Weed Whacker nose and ear hair trimmer smooths out any messes above the collar. For a limited time, you also get two free gifts, a shed travel bag and an anti-chafing pair of boxer briefs come free when you order with our promo code. To keep your tools stocked, try the Peak Hygiene Plan so you never run out of supplies. Don't wait till next year. Go to manscaped.com and use our promo code FASTLANETRUCK to get 20% off your order, plus free international shipping, plus two free gifts. Start off the new year right with a resolution to keep up on your own body's maintenance. Yes, yeah, so before we connect uh, Apple CarPlay, uh, let's just try this. Um, on, on my steering wheel, I have a voice activation. Turn to Sirius XM channel 55. Tuning to channel 55. Okay. Pretty that good. That was pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. So I think that that was a pretty much a perfect result, at least on that first voice control test. So should we rate it a 25 out of 25? Yeah, I, I gave it a lot of points because it's pretty important. You know, hands, you know, hands on the wheel, voice control is really important. Push it one more time. I want to try one more function. Turn temperature to 70 degrees. Please try it again. So it looks like based on some of these prompts, it isn't necessarily connected with like the climate control right. as some systems would be. Um, so let's take a couple points there. All right, we'll rate it at a 20 out of 25. How about that? Yeah. Okay, so Apple CarPlay, should we give it a try? Yes, but here's the thing. It's Sync 3, it's wired. It's wired? Yes. Oh, interesting. So you have to plug your phone into the USB port. Yes, and that's, that's already not ideal because a lot of newest trucks already have wireless systems. Okay. So let me plug in my phone, continue, and it has to be really done within a minute, I would say. There it goes. So that was within a minute. So that was uh, pretty, <laughs> I have different apps on my thing, including 
you know, on X. Very cool. So now it does fill out the entire screen for Apple CarPlay, which looks nice. It's a pretty uh, standard system. And this is rated a 25 uh, maximum points. Now, because it doesn't have the wireless, I do think we have to subtract some points because that is a really nice feature to have. Yeah, totally. So let's rate it a 20 out of 25. You want to do 20? I was thinking more like a 12. I think a wireless Apple CarPlay is a pretty big deal. I would agree. Okay. Yeah. So I think we, we cut off half the points automatically for not having wireless. Okay. Um, and then uh, the functionality work, but because it doesn't have that, we'll rate it a 12 and a half <laughs> out of 25. Okay. So let me connect my phone using Bluetooth. <laughs> That was pretty easy. Okay, cool. So the main gauge cluster, Andre, why don't you dive into that? Yeah, so let's take a look. Um, some of the criteria we're looking at is visibility, clarity, and I think these are very traditional dials. I love that. They're very clear, white on black, and we have a center screen in the middle. And uh, I would rate it quite highly because I also have temperature here, uh, coolant and fuel. And I think it's really that simple and good. Okay, now it's gonna change based on the trim, it's worth noting. So this is like the Lariat, it's got all the options. It's a luxurious one. Um, but yeah, I, I agree, I think it's a good looking screen. So we'll rate it a 10 out of 10 points. I think that's a, a really nicely done info uh, graphic screen in the middle there. Yep. Does it have a volume knob? Yes, right there. Heck yes. So it passes that test. Fantastic, so five out of five. Adaptive cruise control? Yes, it does. So even though this is a little bit more affordable, uh, new pickup truck, the price on this model with every option is um, actually pushing about 37 grand, but it starts at about 21 and a half. And for this model, the Lariat, it does have adaptive cruise control. It's right here on the steering wheel and it's fairly easy to use. All right, we're rated five out of five on that one. Steering wheel controls, what do you think? So uh, a lot of the cruise control system and volume is on the left and the menu system and phone controls are on the right. And you know, I don't have any big complaints here. It's nice at hand and there's a lot going on here, but I think it's pretty clear. The only complaint I have is I wish that the volume controls were on the same side as the media controls mm. and not on the side of the steering wheel controls. And then all the buttons, they all kind of look the same, right? And they're kind of small. Yeah. So maybe it's not perfect, so but pretty good. We're rated an eight out of 10, I think, is fair yep. enough on that. Yep. And then what about the drive modes and four wheel drive controls? How do those work in the Ford Maverick? So let's take a look here. Um, so my drive modes are down here and there's four giant buttons here and the drive modes is here and also traction control system. I don't think that's really ideal uh, because it, it's kind of hard to understand. I mean, what does the little flag and a little leaf mean? Um, I, I, I wish it was a little bit more clear. So I think you'll figure that out fairly quickly. You've got one button here for the traction control. The drive modes overall are, I think, pretty fairly useful. This button with like a little hand in a circle, that's gonna be like that's your auto hill, hold. Hill, auto hold, yes. And then because it's a full-time all-wheel drive system. There's, there's not no. a special switch for the four-wheel drive. So what do you think? Should we give it an eight out of 10? Yeah, so I don't think it's perfect, uh, but it's pretty good. All right, eight out of 10. So let's move on to the Hyundai Santa Cruz. We will tally the result at the very end. So Andre, welcome to the Hyundai Santa Cruz. Now, what is the price difference between this truck and then the Maverick? Uh, so the Maverick, like we said, was about 37 grand, fully loaded the Maverick. This is a fully optioned Hyundai Santa Cruz Limited all-wheel drive with a turbo. So about 41 and a half thousand. Nice, okay, so we are looking at a larger display than the Ford. So the maximum screen size on the Ford is eight inches. However, in Hyundai- Yes, yes, what is it? We're, we're closing in on 10 inches and then side to side, about nine and three quarters. So this so, is a bigger display. Yeah, it's a very horizontal layout uh, for the screen. And um, so let's see how quickly we can find home or not home. And once again, I can see a little home button in the top left, which is closest to the driver. I think that's pretty cool. Yep, and that will take you just to this main display, which will show you the radio, the temperature, the weather even, and then also, um, you know, your approximate location. But it does have media displays. It does have radio. Do you have your phone on you? Yes. Now the Hyundai Santa Cruz um, not only has a pretty good center infotainment system, but it also has wireless Apple CarPlay, which we'll show in a second. So in terms of 10 out of um, 10 points, how do you think that Hyundai has done with this main uh, screen in terms of response, layout, all the usual? I think it's great. I think it's uh, a little bit bigger, which I like. It's clear, it's angled correctly. I, I think it's top top on my score. Okay, I like it too a lot. It's easy to use. It's been super responsive even in the cold. So I think we should give it 
probably 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10, I think it's yeah. a really good system. Now, voice controls, Andre, how does the Hyundai respond to voice controls? Yeah, so in this case, the voice control button is here on the left of the steering wheel, so let me try that. Please say a command. Tune to Sirius XM channel 55. This channel is not available. Please say another channel. What? It <laughs> thinks you went to 255. Here, let's, let's try a different one. Try 25. Well, but this is my Russian accent. Come on. I mean, Ford understood me. Give it another go. Please say a command. Tune to Sirius XM channel 55. Now listening to Sirius XM channel 55. Alright, you want to push the button one more time? I'm going to do mine. <laughs> Please say a command. Set temperature to 70 degrees. Sorry, I didn't hear you. Okay, Please well, try your again. so it doesn't have that either. Set temperature to 70 degrees. Sorry, All right. I didn't understand. So, functionality-wise, we did struggle more than on the, um, on the Ford. You have to wait a little bit longer. So maybe 15 out of 25? Yeah. Okay, we'll give it a 15 out of 25. And then let's try hooking up a phone and engaging CarPlay. So we can do it through the USB, but we should also be able to do it through the main system. Should we give it a go? Yes. All right, so let's go into phone. And let's really go add. Please connect the phone to support oh, Apple CarPlay using approved USB cable. So it's not wireless, dude. I swear it was wireless. Maybe it isn't. Reading USB, allow CarPlay, allow. Yep. Apple CarPlay. Aha. All right, and there you have it. So full, full screen once again. Yep, but it couldn't connect via a wireless system just like the Ford. Um, so that's already a bit of a negative because wireless systems are very handy. Yep, so I think it gets the same as the Ford at 12.5 out of 25. Andre, what do you think of the 10-inch digital gauge cluster? Uh, I, I like it a lot. Once again, traditional style gauges. Of course, it's all digital. I kind of like that. Um, usually there is no glare, uh, which I also really like. Uh, and really clear information, my range left, my fuel efficiency, my odometer. Uh, I think it's pretty clear. I think it's very clear as well. They did a really good job with the uh, main gauge cluster. So I think we give it a 10 out of 10, just like the Ford. It's configurable and shows you all the information. Now, unfortunately, the volume knob. Uh, ooh, uh, okay, so this is one of those trucks that does not have that. Um, there is volume right here, and there's also volume right here. You know, it took me a little while to find it. Yeah. So it's not ideal, it doesn't have it. it, it gets zero points. Yep, no volume knob, I do not like the tap thing. Do we have adaptive cruise control? Yeah, we do. And it's pretty easy to use. Once uh, On the Santa Cruz, it's actually on the right of the steering wheel. The steering wheel is nice and sporty, by the way. Um, I like this, um, adaptive cruise is enabled. So what about steering wheel controls? How do those work? Um, so on the right, you have your adaptive cruise control system, your menu as well, uh, right here. And on the left, you have your volume, your phone connection, and your mode, uh, basically for your uh, infotainment system. So it's a little bit <laughs> switched, but I like how the buttons are a little bit larger than in the Maverick. Um, so I think maybe it's not perfect, but it's good. I also like how the um, driving controls are on the right, and then the uh, infotainment stuff is on the left. I also think, paddle shifters. I think we should give it a 9 out of 10. Yes. And then the drive modes and four-wheel drive controls down here yeah, in the let's, middle. Yeah, let's take a look. So we do have a center differential lock. Lock, yep. it's not really a differential, but it simulates a center diff lock. And yep. then we also have the um, hill descent assist. Yeah. And then the drive mode selector in the middle there. So I have to say, uh, when I got into this, well, first uh, Santa Cruz I drove was a couple of months ago and I was having trouble to find this. Okay. Because it was black on black mm -hmm. and I kind of was having trouble seeing it. It does say drive mode. So I finally found it. So because of that, 
uh, I have to subtract a couple points. Okay, so what do you think? Seven out of ten? Yeah, I okay. would say so. However, once you are in the settings, um, we do have a few uh, smart, sport, normal, and snow, but no off-road mode. So that is also why I'm at a seven out of ten, because there's no off-road settings whatsoever. Yeah, I would agree. So I just checked with my contact at Hyundai because I swear that the Santa Cruz had available wireless Apple CarPlay, and it does, but not on the vehicles equipped with navigation. So you pay more and you get less features. I'm not going to give that to you, Hyundai. I think that's being a little seen. All right, dude, we're now in the all new Frontier. That's right, Andre. <laughs> Let's go ahead and boot it up and check out what the Frontier has to offer. So first of all, the infotainment screen, certainly better than the old one, but so would an iPhone 3GS, so. Ooh, <laughs> ouch. Okay. No, actually, it does look quite nice compared to the old one. What's the screen size? Should we measure it? But but here, it's a little tricky. Look, because it's got a big uh, black border. So, and we have to measure the screen, which starts here. Okay, so we'll start at the corner. So right around nine, nine inches. Nine inch, and that's what they advertise. And then side to side, right around seven and three quarters of an inch. So, so what it passes we, that test. What do we think of the display? Is it pretty good? Yeah, it's pretty good. There's not a lot of glare. I love that this is not chrome. Uh, because Chrome always reflects sunlight and blinds people. Um, we're already on <laughs> channel 58. Uh, so I give it pretty high scores as far as positioning and ease of use. So I think in terms of the usability, first of all, the quality of the graphics are really good. So they did a really nice job with the colors. They're super rich and they really pop off the displays, which I think is really good. Now I do find it can be a little slow and clunky every now and then. Yeah, and I was looking on the screen for the home button and I didn't find it until I saw that. Yeah, there's a hard button. Um, so that'll take you home. It'll show you uh, like these configurable uh, displays on what you want to see. Um, it's okay. I think it's a fairly intuitive system. I'm not my ultimate favorite though. No, no I'm, I'm not going to give it top points. Maybe nine. What do you say? Nine out of ten? Sure. I think we can give it a nine. I, I do think it is quite usable for what it is. So we will give the Frontier a nine out of ten. Now, what about the voice controls? Yeah, let me activate this uh, right now. And the voice control button is on the left. Select the command. Tune Sirius XM to channel 55. Uh huh. You want to try it again, Andre? Let's try it again. Tune Sirius XM to channel 55. Oh, it did not do what you wanted it to do there. Give it another go. Please say your select to command. Tune Sirius XM to channel 55. Let me try one more thing. Oh. Audio. <laughs> something. Do something. Help. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Well, give it a, get, do your thing with the temperature. Okay. Please say your select to command. Set temperature to 70 degrees. Andre, it's completely bricked. Canceling voice recognition. Oh, here we go. Try. Oh. Damn. <laughs> Do it okay, one more on, time. One second. Tune SXM95. No. Canceling voice no. <laughs> Okay, so that's not a good result. No, I think that unfortunately under is a zero. It didn't work. No, it, it no, it was really unhelpful. Yeah, it did not work. Alright, Tommy, let's check our Apple CarPlay. It it has to be wired. Let's see if it's working. Would you like to use CarPlay? Yes, I do. <laughs> Allow. <laughs> Yay! Yay! So that was under 60 seconds. All my apps are there. All right, it looks pretty good. It still got those nice bright Full colors. Screen. Yeah. yeah. All right, so, so 12.5. Yeah, 12.5 because it's not wireless. Yeah, that is my new standard now is the wireless. I think that's a good thing to go off of. Okay. All right, so now that we're done with that, um, what about the gauge cluster? The gauge cluster, I think this is one of my favorites. It's once again, really clear speedometer and tachometer and gauges in the center. And once again, this is a fully loaded, uh, fully optioned Frontier Pro 4X with the price pushing closer to $46,000. Uh, but it's very clear and very easy to read. Yeah, but kind of cycle through some of the middle gauges there in the center. Yeah. I mean, the one thing I don't like about it is there's very few colors involved in the middle. You know That's what I mean? That's true. It's kind of black and whitish until you see the yellow yeah. in the four-wheel drive system. 
So it's not quite as maybe vibrant as some of the other displays. Yeah, but here's the thing, and it's also um, equipped with a towing package. It does have your transmission temperature gauge, at least as a needle. So I think that's very helpful for work. Okay, I will give it a nine out of 10 because okay. I, I think that the colors could be a little a little more exciting. You're a little bit stern with this one. Well, it's still nine out of 10. It's be an A minus in a okay. normal US institution. It's still like a good good score. Okay, do we have a volume knob? Yes, we have a beautiful volume <laughs> knob. Look at look at the, the size of that. All right, it doesn't... Why is it shaking? It, it kind of wiggles around a little bit. <laughs> but look at the size of that thing. You can easily grasp it. Yeah, and the tuning knob is also here. So it passes that test. Yeah. They're a little wibbly, but it does have a volume knob. All right, five out of five on that. Adaptive cruise, Andre. Uh, yes, it has it. So the controls on the steering wheel right here on the right, you've got a lot of your cruise control systems. It also has, of course, driver assistance technologies, um, like the trucks we showed you. On the left, I have my source and my um, menu control buttons for the gauge cluster as well, volume, and also voice activation. You like the, dis the, the layout of the buttons? Yeah, actually, it's more vertical and it's pretty clear. So uh, the Ford and the Hyundai were kind of compressed and this is a little bit uh, more spread out. I kind of like that. I like it too. So I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. They did a really nice job with the steering wheel controls. Uh, not super like flashy, but easy to look at. And then drive modes and four wheel drive controls. Yes, let's check this out. So first of all, the drive mode, it only has one. Okay. And it's tow haul mode. It's on the left. I'll show you that in a second. Okay. Uh, but uh, the four wheel drive controller is right here. It's actually this dial knob and it's pretty at, it's good at hand it's uh, pretty easy to use so uh, this is good you can obviously go to four low yep and it engages really well and the cameras by the way we're not rating the cameras today because uh, we also rate them during our off-road trips and our towing trips. So the one thing I don't like about the four-wheel drive control is that the main four-wheel drive control is over here, but the rear locker is all the way down by your left foot, and then the tow haul <laughs> mode is in a different place yes, altogether. Yes, so that's not great. So it's kind of a mess in terms of the layout, um, and then the actual control itself is a little chintzy. I would rather have that, you know, the Jeep lever. Yeah, so like I'm that. gonna give it a six out of ten. Do you think that's fair? You want to go mm -hmm. higher? I probably go to seven all right we'll give it a seven out yeah. of ten for the four-wheel drive and drive modes plus there really aren't many drive modes you know just the one now let's try the all new 2022 toyota tundra this is a limited trd off-road package which is why the engine start stop button is red which is awesome yeah it looks good so starting with the center infotainment screen, so the biggest <laughs> screen of the group. Actually, one of the biggest screens in the pickup truck world <laughs> right now. All right, corner to corner, 14 inches. That's what they said. As it should be. Side to side, we're looking at 12, over 12 inches. Over 12 inches profile. So what do you think of this main info screen? Dude, it's really clear. It's you know very well laid out. It's huge. It's like a centerpiece of this in, in interior. I love it. I do. I love it too. It's um, very simple to use. Um, the colors are very, very vibrant. Um, I find that all the bubbles, all the buttons are easy to access. Overall, an extremely good screen. Are you good giving it a 10 out of 10 on usability? I, I think so. I agree with that as well. So what about voice controls, Andre? Yes. Yeah, so on the steering wheel, once again, here on the left, I have my little voice activation button. And by the way, Car uh, CarPlay is not currently connected. Tune to Sirius XM channel 55. Tuning to Sirius XM channel 55. Ooh. And did you notice something else? And I found this out when this truck was launching because I talked to it here. Uh, the sound, the response came from the left speaker. Oh, cool. So let's try you. So you speak to it now and let's see uh, the truck talk to you. It should talk to you from the right. Okay, you want to click the button? Set climate control to 70 degrees. Set climate control to 70 degrees. You can operate the vehicle's features using voice commands. You can say things like air conditioner on or change to FM. Air conditioner on.
It doesn't like me. No. <laughs> Air conditioner on. Why don't you try it? Sorry, I'm having trouble understanding you. It doesn't like you. It doesn't like you. You, you try the same thing. Okay. Air conditioner on. This feature is not available. <laughs> At least it understood me. Okay, Ugh. so pretty good, not great. I mean, who started out so well with the uh, <laughs> infotainment, the setting, the radio. Yes. Um, it didn't work when we tried to use a prompt that it recommended. Um, so that's probably a half the points, I would say. You think so? Or 15-ish? Yeah, I'd say 15. Yeah. Now, if you're using the radio, like, um, try, um, I don't know, try sending the radio to a different channel. I think it'll be well, pretty fast. Well, uh, here's another one. Check this out. What is the current weather? It is cloudy in Boulder, Colorado, and it feels like 37 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, we'll give it a 15. I think that's fair. <laughs> it likes you, it doesn't like me. Yeah, the screen does look very nice. So what about Apple CarPlay, Andre? Well, let's check it out. It's supposed to have wireless connectivity, so let's see how easy or hard that is. Okay, so should we connect your phone? Yes. Yes! Yes! Look at that! Look at this, and it's full screen, uh, and it looks really, really clear. So we do have wireless Apple CarPlay for the first no, time. No in wires. Our test. See, no wires. <laughs> nope. Clearly, it's working. Awesome. All right. I would call that a major win. So, um, wireless Apple CarPlay. What do you think? Twenty-five out of twenty-five points on that. Yeah, it's, it was relatively straightforward. All right. So, Andre, what about the main gauge cluster? Yeah, let's check this out. This is a limited edition once again, um, so um, you can also get a Tundra with a full digital display, but this is not it. Um, actually, I kind of prefer this in some ways, um, a little bit more old school, I guess, uh, but very clear tack and speedometer, fuel, temperature gauges. There is only one maybe hitch with this gauge cluster. This is has a towing package, but no transmission temperature gauge whatsoever. Now, so yeah. If you do get the digital gauge cluster and we can throw some shots in, it does look incredibly vibrant Clear, and nice. Yeah. Um, so I do think that this is one of the best gauge clusters in the industry. So what do you think, let's 10 out of 10? Yeah, let's rate it quite high. All right, 10 out of 10. Now, volume knob, huge. Let's see, uh, yeah, and it's pretty stable. <laughs> pretty stable so I would rate it very highly okay five five adaptive cruise control yeah and Tundra has one of the biggest chunkiest steering wheels I, I, I've seen recently um, you have your uh, adaptive cruise control system on the right here very easy uh, very huge buttons uh, very clear um, and then on the left you got your volume you got your menus your phone I, I think this is one of the best steering wheel controls. I think it's really good, so we'll give it a 10. Now, we gave the uh, Nissan a 10 too because it's easy to use, but this is easy to use and looks really, really nice. Yeah. And is Adaptive Cruise standard in this truck? Yes, it is, because TSS uh, Toyota Safety Sense 2.5 is available on all Tundras. Now, what about drive modes and the four-wheel drive control? Yeah, so it's actually down here, and because this is an off-road truck, TRD off-road package, we have a few uh, more options here, but you have the drive modes here, which you can control using this knob. You have tow haul modes, also two of them. You can control this way. You have your crawl control system and multi-terrain uh, select system. These are available when four-wheel drive is enabled. So let me try to switch to that. There you have it. You have drive modes once again. So I think overall, this is very easy and it's in one place. Now, the one thing that we need to talk about, especially being a full-size truck, um, is it doesn't have four-wheel drive auto. And also the locker is actually here with a traction control. So at least it's not on the left. So it's actually very easy to reach here. What do you think? Should we give it a nine out of 10 or eight out of 10? I will give it a nine. Okay, we'll give it a nine because the multi-terrain selects nice and all the, the tow buttons and the drive modes are very thorough. So we'll give it a nine out of 10 in that category. Okay, I think we're done, Andre. Should we go rate the trucks as a whole? Yep. So 
I'm sure we'll get some comments about the scoring system, but it is, I think, a fairly fair metric of the different technologies in the trucks. So Andre, at number four with 57 and a half points, the Nissan Frontier. Yep. Up from there is 68.5 with the Hyundai Santa Cruz. And number two is the Maverick at 73.5, and the Tundra comes in in first place with a whopping 89 points. So I want to keep doing this system, maybe tuning it slightly uh, for future pickup trucks as well, and maybe even cars and yep. SUVs. And if you want to learn more about you know, the camera systems, four-wheel drive, towing, uh, we have different videos for that, right? Yeah, check out tfltruck.com for all of that great information. And let us know how you would change the system, how we can improve the, uh, the list, and we'll see you on the next video.